Floppy has a unique skill set of being able to completely lock down whole areas of the map all by himself. And he does this especially on three different maps, Dust2, Nuke, and Train. Let's take a look at how he pulls this off. We're going to start here with Dust2, but in general, whenever you're holding any area by yourself, there's three important rules you have to follow. Number one, and by far the most important, is you have to stay alive. Number two is that you need to delay the T's getting into the area that you're trying to hold to allow for rotates to come in for your teammates and them not to overwhelm you. And third is you have to get more than one kill before you die. So let's take a look at what a default setup looks like for Floppy in just a general rifle round. On Dust2, Floppy plays on B site, and the place that he normally likes to play is right here behind this box. Now why does he play there? He plays there because it allows a really nice initial engage, peeking right down here, and he can be on this side of the box, or he can be on this side of the box and get a nice pick as they're coming in. Now the reason he can get a nice pick as they're coming in is because for the T's, this is a very hard spot to flash, and it's not a spot they can Molotov until they're already into the site. I have not seen a Molotov come from here that can land in this area, so they have to come into the site in order to get him out of this spot. So he's able to get a good engage initially, and then as they're coming in, after the initial engage, he can then hide behind the box where they can no longer see or shoot him. So as they're coming in, he takes the initial engage, gets a kill, maybe not, and then they have to come in and start clearing angles as he goes back behind this box and is safe. So as they're coming in and clearing angles, they have to clear car because they don't know 100% if he's solo. So they come in, they have their back turned, Floppy then peeks over here, takes a nice shot right here, and potentially gets another kill. Now say he peeks out and does that, he can then just move right on back and be safe. And as this player comes up, he can then peek the right side or just be watching the right side and then take this engage and have another 1v1. So at this point, he could potentially have had three different 1v1s and have gotten all three kills. If he gets two kills or he gets one, he still can be playing behind this box and staying safe, delaying enough for his teams to be rotating up here, or rotating up to window, rotating down through lower, wherever they are going. He's delaying them as they're coming in. Another option as well is you'll always see him holding a flash when he's holding this angle. And that is because as they're coming in and he takes the initial engage, he'll then pop behind this box and he'll drop a flash off the wall like this. Now that may or may not blind anyone as they're coming in because it is a long flash, it's expected, and it makes noise as it's bouncing. But the important thing is that it forces them to have to turn around or wait and it's just a nice little two to three second delay again as his teammates are coming up and rotating in or he can throw this flash and make them turn around as he peeks the side of the box. This spot just offers a really good opportunity at multiple kills and also offers a fantastic opportunity to delay. You'll see him a lot of the times also holding a smoke. So say they do come in and he gets a kill or he doesn't and they decide to throw a Molotov on him. He can then just drop his smoke and kind of just play around this back side of the smoke as his team again is coming in and he's just delaying them from pushing straight across and overwhelming him. He could just pop back here and kind of hold this angle down here as they're pushing up. He can hold down here or he could even move over here. He could jump up on the box and take a fight down over here. Whatever he needs to do to delay them from coming into the site and give his team time to rotate over. As I said, this is his default spot, but let's take a look at a recent demo against Ents and see how he's actually playing the site. In the first round versus Ents, you'll see Floppy, he actually takes a spot back here behind the box in the back of the site. Now this is the only time you'll see him take this spot, and that's for good reason. The reason is that this spot is very easy for the T's to Molotov as they're entering the site without him being able to get any sort of kills, and they can easily rush in and he has to move and can have little to no impact from this spot without having even seen a T. So usually what the T's would do is they would drop a smoke coming out of the entrance, and then they can Molotov back here, and then Floppy can't do anything. So he never plays this spot on a normal rifle round. He only will play this spot in a pistol because it can give him some advantages. So what are those advantages? 
One, the T's probably have very little utility. Ents actually has a Molotov here, but if they're going B, they're not going to be using the Molotov in this way. They're going to be saving it for a window or something like that because why would they just waste a Molotov throwing it to the back of the site if they don't know anyone's there? They would rather try and go into the site and overwhelm. And also he has the USP advantage at this range. So as they're coming in, he should have good line of sight and be able to use his USP to peek up, take a shot or two, peek back down, stay alive, kind of just take pot shots here and there. Again, as his team is rotating over, he should be able to delay. They're coming in. They're still going to have to be checking angles, assuming there's more than one person there. And he should be able to stay alive and take some good shots, get some kills, waste some time, things like that. Round two, S-Tag is nice enough to drop a smoke for him to help with any sort of rush. And then Floppy is right here playing his default spot behind this box in case they're bursting right out. Round four, he's still on the site solo, but he's not playing his default position. He's actually playing up towards the entrance. Now, why is he doing this? Because this is a spot where if they come in, he probably gets a kill and then gets traded and they're completely on the site for free. The reason he does this is he actually has a teammate already lower and he has a teammate pushing up cat. So by him pushing up and being aggressive here, he's going to be in an unexpected spot. And if the T's are coming through and coming up and in, then he can get a kill or two and his team is already so fast on this flank that they're going to still be able to hold the site as the T's are coming in and checking all these angles, smoking off, Molotoving over here, checking back site, all that kind of stuff. They're already going to have players coming in able to be on that flank. If his team was not pushed up in these other spots, this is not a good place to be. Typically here, you're going to get one kill and then get traded, and then the entire site is wide open and completely locked down. No other teammates would be able to be there in time, and you lose the round. Round five is your typical floppy round. He enters the site, and he molotovs the entrance. Now, why does he do that? To stop the rush. If they're rushing, they're going to have to use their own smoke to get through, and he'll have some sort of warning that they're coming. He can start spraying. He can throw a flash. He can get to a safe spot, etc. Later on in the round, he's going to throw a flash deep into the entrance. And why does he do this? To delay a little bit, see if the opera's there. If the opera gets flashed, typically they shoot to see if someone's peeking or whatever. See if someone makes a step. Kind of try to get some sort of information. And then he's going to hold on to his smoke and his flash. And he will always hold on to at least a flash in this spot. Because it's so important that after the initial engage that he throws that flash off the wall to delay another three to four seconds that he has to hold on to one. You'll see him sometimes use the smoke at the entrance. Sometimes he'll save it for if they come in and he wants to try and use it to play around. He kind of differentiates between how he wants to do that based on how the round is going. But he'll always be holding on to a flash for after the initial engage when they come out the door. Round seven, Floppy comes in, Molotov's like he always does, but right as the Molotov is running out, he throws a smoke, and that's something he doesn't normally do. Now, why does he drop a smoke right at the entrance after the Molotov? He needs to make sure that no one is coming in, and the reason for that is, is because Woxic is actually pushing up Cat, and he is looking down this angle right here. So they have a lot of information, and they're getting aggressive somewhere else. So Floppy has to hold the line on B site. If Woxic is coming up cat and taking an aggressive angle, it's totally worthless if the terrorist just bombards straight into here. Round 13, he's actually playing the site with S-Tag, and S-Tag dies, and you'll see this is exactly why Floppy holds on to the flash. As he picks up the op, he takes the initial engagement, gets a kill, drops the flash, and then peeks the left side as the flash is popping to his right. So it creates a bunch of space for him to be able to Peek the left side as the flash is popping, which won't hit him, but it will blind people coming out the door. They'll have to turn around or eat it, and it gives him an advantage to be able to peek again and get another kill potentially, as he does. So now let's talk about nuke. What is Floppy's default on nuke? His default is typically to do one of two things. The first thing is to come in and drop a smoke, smoke that bounces down here, and then he'll kind of play these headshot angles either behind the boxes on the railing or he'll play down the ramp a little bit and play a headshot angle that way. Now, why does he play these two angles? The reason he plays these two angles is because he's on a headshot angle that they have to check where he's able to get a pretty good engage initially. 
And then after the initial engage, boom, he's out of there. He heads down the ramp and is able to get down on the B site where he can take any number of angles, typically down here somewhere around ramp where he can be checking over here and over here and take another engagement where he'll have another advantage later on. The hope is that he gets one kill here, drops down, and then he's able to get another kill or two down here and delay them because as they're coming down ramp, they're checking here, they have to check here, they have to worry about here, they have to worry about here, they have to worry about down here, like everywhere that they have to be checking. So it's a great spot for him to be able to play, potentially get a kill, and also be pretty safe as they're coming in. The other thing that he'll do is sometimes he'll come in and he'll just leave it the smoke and keep it and he'll play this little pixel gap where there's a little gap right here where you can see as they're coming in all the way through. So he can kind of sit there with a Molotov in his hand and as he sees the terrorist cross through this little angle right here, boom, he drops a Molotov and they're delayed there. And then if he's kept his smoke when that's fading, boom, he drops his smoke and they're super delayed, like another 30 seconds or whatever. Now on Dust2, he would always molly first and wouldn't hold any sort of gap like this. And why is that? The reason that he'll sometimes just hold the molly and not use any utility is because the difference between the T's having to come through this corridor and out into here is a huge difference between Dust2 when they have just that wide open area where they can get in and completely flood and spread out. When they're coming through this corridor, it's very difficult to have multiple T's coming in and be able to be checking angles. So as they're coming in, like they're going to be lined up, they're going to be next to each other. It's very difficult to come in as a unit and being able to check all these different angles all together at the same time because they have to be worried about a player being on boxes down here, over here, opera over here, floppy up here. They have to be worried about a lot of things as they're coming in. And there's just not a lot of room for all of them to try and be wedged in between this small area. So the first pistol round is a good example of this. He's here on the railing holding a headshot angle. He sees two people across the pixel gap. He doesn't have a Molotov because it's pistol round. So he takes two shots, doesn't get a kill, but still bails anyway because he knows that there's multiple people coming. He doesn't want to risk another headshot angle because it's more important that he just lives. Next round, does what he typically does, drops a smoke but then he plays it a little bit differently than default as he holds this little gap in the smoke knowing they're on pistols or some sort of eco. So he plays that, that little gap. It's still pretty safe. He'll see them coming through the smoke and coming in and can bail if he needs to. Next round, round 18, he drops the same smoke, but he actually decides to get aggressive on this round. And now why is he playing up towards the smoke on this round when he can easily be overwhelmed? The reason for that is because Alex is actually on a quick flank and is secret already on B. So if he gets overwhelmed and gets only one kill or no kills or whatever, Alex is already down there to be able to then hold the line on B. If Alex wasn't there, he would not be playing aggressive like that. But the hope is that he can play an off angle if they decide to come in or whatever. He can hope to get a couple kills before they come. And then backup is already there on B site to take over. Round 21, he does his default where he's holding the pixel gap with the incendiary. The T's actually drop an incendiary, so he continues holding his same angle, throws a grenade in case they start pushing, uses his own smoke, and continues kind of holding the same angle, spamming a little bit. Round 22, Floppy's holding his pixel gap and actually gets shot, so he then falls back to this ramp spot where he again can hold an angle, drops his smoke, heads back up to his normal default spot while the smoke is bloomed, and then as a T comes out, he gets a kill and then immediately bails. He doesn't wait around to see if more are coming. He doesn't wait around to try and get a second kill. He has to stay alive. So he gets the kill, he gets his team the advantage and then heads down to B to take another advantageous angle for them to come onto B and can hold the line down here now much easier than trying to hold it up there where the T's know exactly where he is and he can get overwhelmed again. Round 25, he's playing the Molotov pixel gap again. It's about 30 seconds into the round already. He drops the Molotov, throws a flash, and then a teammate actually comes and drops a smoke for him. So now this area is completely locked down, so Entz actually decides to leave. Later on, Entz actually decides to come back towards ramp, and now Floppy's playing an off angle that he doesn't normally play. Now why is he doing this? He's doing this because there's actually already two other players down towards B. So he's playing that off angle. You see the enemy comes in, isn't even looking for him because he didn't see Floppy at the headshot angles. 
and doesn't expect him to be ramp. So it's checking other angles. Floppy gets two kills as they're heading down. There's already two other CTs on B and that's completely locked down. So what is Floppy's default on train? On a typical round, what he does is he'll go up front on here on B and play up really close where he can kind of hear anything that's going on. So if any T's are coming down over here, they make this jump or anything like that. He can hear all that's going on if they decide to flash down in here. He can kind of hear what's happening. The other thing he'll do is he'll sit here and he'll have a Molotov in his hand. And the second he sees anybody, boom, he drops that Molotov. And then he's able to like back up and he can either play like this angle or he can back up, you know, somewhere over here and then play an angle like up here where he's safe down here as another CT is rotating over to then watch this angle. It kind of gives him a lot of flexibility. The other thing Floppy will do is if he wants to get aggressive is he'll come down and then he'll actually drop this smoke up into here. And then he can do one of two things. He can either come up in it and then he can kind of play this angle right here, see if anyone comes up, or he can hop on the railing and play over the smoke watching this angle. So if any T's are coming down here, he can kill him. The other thing he'll do is if he drops that smoke, he'll then run, take this up, and then play this angle right here. So as they're coming around the smoke, he can take this one engage and he's right here. So if he wins the engage, boom, he bails. If he doesn't get the kill immediately, he can still bail out and then get to a safe spot. Here versus Genji, we're in round two. You can see Floppy comes up really close. He's holding a grenade because it's round two and they have little to no armor. So if he sees anyone, he can drop the grenade, which will delay them coming down. And then he'll fall back a little bit. And you can see that he sees them. He drops it. He falls back. He ends up actually staying close because they have a quick rotate over from Z and ends up cleaning this up. Round five here, he doesn't actually have a Molotov. So what he does is he goes up to the angle and he's sitting there listening, but he's not actually peeking because if he peeks anyone and is holding a smoke, they're going to be able to overwhelm him and he won't be able to stop him. So he's playing an angle where he can hear but not peek and then he waits just a little bit to drop his smoke because if he waits and they actually come and he has a smoke out, there's nothing he can do. So what he does is he plays back, he listens, and then he drops his smoke and then goes back to a safer angle that he can play. And you'll notice on train, you can see here in round six, he's always taking angles where he can only be shot from one side. He's either peeking upper where they can't see him if they come out lower, or he's watching lower where if they come out upper, they can't see him either. That's very important to do because you cannot be getting shot from both sides. You have to make sure that you're taking engagements that you can win. Last round of the half is when he drops the smoke deep and then he goes upper with the scout to try and check this angle and you can see how he's just behind the wall. So the second he takes a shot, he's gone. But he's trying to get a little advantage here, try and get a 1v1 of someone pushing a smoke or checking. And then even afterwards, he's still holding this angle where he'll be able to take a shot and then bail unless someone comes out and hits a headshot on him. So he's in a pretty good spot, a pretty safe spot, and is able to get some information, see what's going on, give his team a little bit of an advantage, and then still be playing pretty safe. Floppy is so good at being able to follow these principles of staying alive, delaying the tease, and getting multi-kills. And it's such an advantage to the Cloud9 team that he's on now and to the team that he was on. They're able to just make these different strats and play around the fact that he can hold entire halves of the map by himself. And it just opens up a whole world of possibilities for them. So the next time you're watching Cloud9, take a look at the mini map and see where he's playing. And then when they're showing his point of view, think about how he's peeking all these angles and using his different utility to help delay them coming into these areas and allowing for the rest of his team to come and help and pressure different areas. It's such an advantage and it's super interesting to watch and he is so, so good at this. Thank you for watching. My name is David at Cloud9 underscore win on Twitter, c9win.com if you want to check out my podcast or other stuff I got going on over there. Subscribe if you like and I'll see you next time.